Today I'm going to take a look at this Enritsu optical power meter, the ML93A. Uh, this particular one is a very old, I believe, as old as me, 83 I think. I saw some dates written on the top, but we'll find out when we get in there. Uh, optical power meter. Now it's missing the actual head. I got this like for like eight bucks or something on eBay so I just wanted to see inside it uh, we obviously can't use it for anything because it's missing the head attachment that actually does the optical metering uh, this particular one is powered by both AC and DC and it flips on and shows some stuff and the cage just goes wacky and I hear a relay or something click in there too uh, the buttons do respond like the cow button as you can see a few of them are missing and that's about it. I can't really do anything on this thing without the meter, as expected. So, I think we'll just rip it apart. Uh, on the front, there's the... Oh, I did get the gauge to go down a bit. Or maybe it just, like, powered up. Let me see. Hmm. No, I think it just warmed up and kicked on. Uh, anyway, uh, we've got a coarse and fine adjustment on the front, an averaging mode, range hold, and a couple uh, gauging, uh, you know, the, the ranges, calibration button, and some controls like up, down, enter, I guess. There's also a little sticker on here, or metal plate, that says ITT Telecommunications. I guess that's who owned it. And it's got a little... On the top, there's a calibration sticker down here. It says it was caled in 90, 98. And up here, we've got the uh, serial and a date, 1983. And oh, three months after I was born. And it's just got some uh, specific measurements for the uh, different wavelengths. And that's what it is. It's obviously like a big sheet that they've taped on. Well, there's oh, a chart on the back. Aw, cute. On the back we've got two fuses, AC in, DC in, a ground connection, blanking output, and a recorder output. There's also space for a GPIB interface along with a dip switch for uh, address selection. And there's also these nice little posts to wrap up the wire. Took a little bit of poking and prodding around, but I did manage to figure out how to get this thing apart. Uh, there's a whole bunch of screws around the case, just a metal case, nothing interesting there quite sturdily built though so we've got the main digital board big power transformer and a capacitor that I'm gonna have to uh, make sure is discharged I can see a power transistor or two in the bottom for direct fire very nicely made big ribbon cables going off to the front panel and it's a two board design and I can see some what look to be relays down there. I removed the bottom plate, it just slides out and we've got a whole bunch of what appear to be really nice old relays. Huge 100 volt uh, 10 mic cap, uh, you know, it's like a wrapped polypropylene cap or whatever they're called. Got a couple little transformers and what looks to be a larger relay actually made by Enritsu or at least branded Enritsu some part that's canned under here, we'll take a look under there a TDK noise filter on the power input there's a little terminal block up here that's got the uh, mains input coming in a nice little heat sink on this little metal canned transistor and uh, down here there's uh, one of these uh, like aging things. I forgot what they're called. I don't remember what the exact name for these things are. Basically there's a little bubble in it of I think mercury or something or maybe it's just an air gap and basically as current runs through this it slowly moves the bubble along. Uh, we'll try and take a look at this in a bit but I'm not sure if I'll you know I'll have to look up how to actually get it to work. It may not be possible to run it at a speed where we can actually see a difference either. I don't know what the scale is on that thing. And other than that, it's just a whole bunch of analog circuitry, which I am not going to claim I have any idea how, how it works. Uh, got some coax cable running along the board. This is the power switch. It's a on, off, on style power switch. It switches either the DC connection or the AC connection 
the front just has this piece of plastic and it's a, a nice aluminum cover or front plate and uh, yeah it just gives you the nice uh, red numbering through the nice plastic cover we've also got this is the main I thought this was the main filter cap or the like the input filter but it's actually not it it's obviously after it's been rectified because it's only a 35 volt 4700 mic Nippon Chemicon cap like all the other caps are all rated 85 degrees instead of 105 that might just be because you know in the 80s and maybe you just couldn't get 105 as easily or uh, at all I'm not too sure but this is the connector to the sensor itself it's a very sturdy nice connector you can see there's quite a few connections into it and it just connects with this edge connector into the analog board down here like that no it goes like that because these are actually numbered okay let's go through a lot of these internal components uh, first up is the noise filter made by TDK now normally I wouldn't even mention this thing other than it exists but uh, this one actually has a little uh, plastic shield on the back and you can actually see inside I've never actually seen inside one of these. I don't think I've ever opened one up. It looks like it's just a you know, couple mobs and a, a choke, but hey, never actually seen in one of these. Then we have the little power board. This is the bridge rectifier transistor. You can tell it's a transistor not only because it's labeled Q1, but it's also got E, B, and C. Well, C is kind of hard to see. Uh, listed on it for emitter, base, and collector. We've got some input filtering, uh, Nippon Chemicon 25 volt 470 mic cap very nice output yeah nothing nothing too interesting to choke and uh, an inductor nicely covered in some kind of weird epoxy resin the problem with a lot of these uh, transistors and stuff on this on all the boards are they're just their labels are just like NEC A780 or 708 in this case sorry and uh, yeah I just don't know where these come from and what the what the part number actually means I can't seem to find any information on them Unfortunately, we will probably never figure out what that is. I tried googling around. I couldn't find anything other than it's like a transistor Well, that does a lot of good, but they're in the nice metal cans as are pretty much all of the transistors on this We've also got the transformer. Sorry the Transformer not transformer <laughs> There's a space there for some reason and it's just your standard transformer. It's very heavy, and it, it, I was wondering if it was shielded magnetically or anything. And it does seem to have a strap here, but I cut through on this side, and it's just paper and like an epoxy coating and some clear plastic. Moving on to the quote unquote digital board, this has the main CPU, which is an NEC D780C, which is a Z80 clone. And we've got uh, an Intersil ICL7109 CPL, which is a 12-bit analog to digital converter with a three-state binary output. It's fairly old and not too remarkable by today's standards. There's not too much else on this board other than like 4000 series logic. We've also got this uh, TC4514, which uh, takes a 4-bit parallel signal and converts into hex. We've also got uh, three EEPROMs. I took one out. I, I've looked through all of these. They don't appear to, even though they're labeled 0, 1, and 2, uh, they don't appear to be like an even odd arrangement or anything like that. They simply appear to be separate storage. I can't find any patterns or text in them, so it appears to purely be code, but the code is very different between them. So, like I said, it doesn't appear to be any kind of uh, even odd arrangement, although I don't know what the third one would be. One thing I noticed about these sockets is they have these little... Oh, this one's breaking, but they have these little separator things. Let's see if I can get all of it in there. And, well, get rid of that part. And it fits into the socket. And it just gives it a little more height so that it won't squish down the chip. I'm thinking this was probably some kind of automated procedure where they, they were crushing the chip pins or something, like an early pick and place machine. So maybe they needed these plastic spacers to keep it from damaging these ICs, the, the socketable ones. Not sure on that one. 
There's also space for another EEPROM, they just decided not to use it. We've also got all these connectors going to the front panel and the secondary board and stuff like that. Found one lone ceramic chip. It says it's an NEC UPC 6100. No idea what that is, can't find any real, informa real information on it other than the fact that it exists. So I guess that will remain a mystery unless someone knows. We've also got these huge old school ceramic capacitors. A lot of the capacitors have little itty bitty bits of plastic tubing on them to keep them from shorting out to anything. Oh, how cute. It's because they're near IC, so if they were pushed down on the right angle, it's possible it could short out to the pins. This is what I'll call the analog board. It has the input from the sensor. And my guess is the way these things work is they simply have a device like a photo cell or whatnot inside the sensor box which detects a certain wavelength of light, converts it into electrical voltages, and then the system just figures out what the hell that means. Uh, based on all the relays, I'm not sure if this thing's actually capable of producing a light source with the right head, of course. I'm thinking it isn't. I think these are just for switching in gain and stuff like that. But, uh, you know, this is not my uh, area of expertise, so I certainly don't know exactly how these optical power meters work. On the front we have this big pot, which does not turn very easily. And I believe these are all op amps. They're all listed as C251As, made by NEC. Almost everything's made by NEC in this thing. But just based on the fact that they have 10 pins, I'm going to go ahead and say they're most likely op amps. We've got a couple RF cables, well, like coax cables, and a whole bunch of trimmer caps, or no, these are uh, resistors, uh, variable resistors. And we've got a lot of these Match Sushita NRSD 12V relays. These things seem to be pretty impressive. They're completely sealed. They use a gold cobalt contact, so it prevents it from, well, it reduces the uh, welding and the arcing and whatnot from just repeated opening and closing on a relay. Man, I mean, they, they can do 500 cycles a second. That seems just ridiculous for a manual, like a, me a mechanical relay to, to switch on and off that quickly. And uh, they're not super high current. They're 1 amp at 20 volts DC, and I think they're 0 0.3 amps at 115 volts AC. So they're not super high current, but they are just like really top quality. Uh, I think I'll pull these off and give them a test and maybe put them on eBay because there are actually a couple on eBay and they're at some outrageous price, like $70 each. This chip, I'm not 100% sure what it is. I assume it is another op amp because it's 8 pin. It's got a little heat sink on it and you can see a separate ground point running right to the uh, board. And it's also, uh, there's a second point running to the back ground connector. We've got huge 10 mic, 100 volt, uh, this is like a polypropylene cap, film cap. And a couple of these very large uh, Murata caps. They're, uh, I mean, I assume they're just a ceramic one. They look like ceramic ones, but who knows, it could be like a really fancy film cap. And not too much else on this board. I mean, we've got this funky sensor, which unfortunately I can't find any information on, so I don't think we'll be able to run it to, to see if this thing actually does anything. Like I said before, this is a, uh, a sensor, well, it's a, almost like a recorder where a little bubble is supposed to move along as the usage of the meter adds up. I can't even see the bubble, so I'm thinking it's either way past it or way early. I'm assuming it's way past it. Uh, so I don't know and I can't find any information on how to drive these properly. I did see it in a video once so if I ever stumble across it, I'm going to hang on to it and if I ever stumble across the video I'll uh, I'll film another one and we'll try and run it. We also have an Anritsu what appears to be a big relay. Couldn't find any information on this. I mean it's in-house part number. And we've got transformer under this can. I don't know anything about the transformer. Maybe we'll try and take that off in a sec. Finally, we have the display board, which is uh, missing its panel meter now. It's just a little analog meter. I think I'll hold on to that. These are always cool. And we've got uh, several of these, believe it or not, HP made. I don't know if we can get that right enough. 
HP made uh, 5082-7740 uh, LED matrix displays. Well, it's uh, alphanumeric characters, or numeric character. And we've got all the buttons, and just like some of them have LEDs underneath them. These are kind of the old school uh, HP style ones. I know a lot of HP uh, equipment has stuff that looks very similar to this. I don't think they're exactly the same, but they look very similar. And we've got one cool old school button on the front. Also notice this transistor, again, nicely labeled collector base emitter, uh, is actually in backwards. It's silk screen for there, and it just sticks out the back. I'm sure it was, oh, I, actually, I think I checked it when the case was on this, it wouldn't have fit. So they prob probably uh, had to do that just because they weren't thinking. And look how horrible this soldering is. Ugh. That's what happens you don't clean your boards and leave it for 30 years. There we have it. Uh, kind of interesting piece of technology. I've never seen one of these things before. So I, I, I just really wanted to see what they were made up of. And if it was like crazy high end. I mean, yeah, it's... High end, obviously the analog stuff especially, it's all very nice. I just wanted to see what was inside, even though I don't know too much about these things.